All right, in today's example here, we're going to take a look at an exponential problem here. And uh, what they give you here is you have the square root of 7 raised to the power of the square root of 24 minus root x is 49. So whenever you're solving these exponential equations, the deal is, is you want to get a common base on both sides. So obviously you see the 7 here, and I see the 49. I can rewrite the 49 as 7 squared. So let's go ahead and do that first. So this will be the square root of 7. This is still unchanged as is, and I'll rewrite this as 7 squared. And what you want to do is you want to be in a situation, uh, whenever you're solving these exponentials, I want a situation where I have like a to the x is equal to a to the y, so that I can conclude that therefore the exponents must equal. This is what we want. That's typically... Uh, the strategy for solving any exponential equations when bases are involved here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I just have to rewrite um, the square root of 7 as in its exponential form. So this will be 7 to the half. And that is all to the exponent of 20, the root of 24 minus root of x. And that's equal to 7 squared. So continuing this on here, I have power to a power. And whenever you have power to power, you multiply. So this becomes 7 to the square root of 24 minus root x over 2 is going to equal 7 to the power of 2. And now you can see I've kind of achieved the goal I was outlining here. We have the bases are now both 7s, and they're both raised to a single exponent, single exponent. And uh, in which case now that must be the case that these must be equal. Right, so now this is the case that the root of 24 minus root x over 2 must equal 2. So therefore, the square root of 24 minus root x must equal 4. And whenever you're solving a radical equation, you square both sides. This is 24 minus root of x is 16. And you get negative root of x is going to be equal to negative 8. That is the root of x is 8, and squaring both sides here, I end up getting x equals 64. So for this answer, I got 64 as my answer to this problem here. Um, again, you can check it. We did square both sides, so it could be a situation where you have an extraneous root. So if I take a look here, I've got x equaling 64. If I sub that in to this equation, you're going to end up getting here uh, this will be the root. This will be 24 minus the root of 64, which will be 24 minus 8, which is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So this, what we're going to have here, if I let x be 64 on the left hand side, you're going to have the root of 7 to the power of 4, which is exactly 7 to the power of a half to the power of 4, which is 7 squared. Which guess what? It is also 49. Uh, so the answer to this problem here is 64.